In this question, I will determine the enthalpy of vaporization given the temperature and the corresponding vapor pressure of a chemical. Over here, we have seven data points. I'll show you how to use all seven data points to determine the enthalpy of vaporization in an Excel spreadsheet. So first, I just copy and paste it, everything here. Right, we have temperature in Kelvin, we have pressure in torque. And then we need to make two new columns. One is one Kelvin over temperature. The other one is the logarithm of P over torque. So now if you see this is 229 Kelvin, one Kelvin over temperature is going to be just a number without unit. So what I will do is I'll put equal sign here and then one over this A4. The reason I do this is because I can just drag it down to fill all other cells. And now why do we do P over Tor? This is because over here it's 10 Tor. P over Tor is 10 Tor over Tor. That's just 10. We'll just take logarithm of 10. Well then what's wrong with taking the logarithm of just 10 Tors? Uh, you never take the logarithm of a unit. For example, what's the logarithm of one bar? What's the natural logarithm of one Pascal? What's the natural logarithm of one Tor? Well, your answer should be different because one bar is greater than one Tor, one Tor is greater than one Pascal, but you are looking for trouble here with a unit. So now I have one Kelvin over temperature, those are just numbers. And the natural logarithm of P over Tor, those are just numbers. We have seven data points. Make sure you have one Kelvin over T. On the left hand side, this LMP over Tor on the right hand side. Because one Kelvin over T, that's going to be your horizontal axis. So what I will do is I will highlight all these seven data points. I will click insert on top. And then we'll do a scattered plot. Uh, it doesn't look very good because, well, we have to kind of set the range properly. So over here, uh, this space is wasted. So what I will do is I will do format and perhaps from 0 0.0025. You think that would be good? I think I did something wrong, so I need to double check. 0 0.0025, I forgot another 0 over there. Okay, now it looks good. Uh, and then I will do linear regression, plus uh, we will do trend line. Uh, I think we'll just look at more options so that we have linear or display equation or display R squared. All right. If R squared is one, that means a perfect match. Uh, I will click this Excel and then click home and change the font size to maybe 14 so we can see everything more clearly. All right. This slope over here, this slope is negative enthalpy of vaporization over R. So we just need to multiply this slope by negative r. That's it. We'll get the final answer. So NSOP of vaporization, uh, supposedly there should be a delta sign here. So I'm going to just type delta, delta, uh, the triangle sign. Put delta here. This is equal to the slope, negative 3618.7 times negative r. Uh, these two numbers are both in SI units. So this is my final answer in SI units. Sinjoule per mole. And then we convert it to kilojoule per mole. So this is divided by 1000. We get kilojoule per mole. And we're done. Uh, we, well, in mastering chemistry, I think they use 8.314, so you can use the same number. 
four-year Mastering Chemistry homework. Uh, but if you want to have a more accurate uh, value of R, it's 8.31446. All right, over here, uh, I would say it's 30.1 kilojoule per mole. Now I'm going to show you a second way of determining this slope, and then uh, delta H uh, sub vaporization. So this is enthalpy of vaporization. So maybe I should just put this uh, here: enthalpy of vaporization. All right. So another way to determine the slope is pretty simple. Uh, you just need to be familiar with uh, Excel. So slope. And then what you need to do is you just do this equal sign slope. Right? And then you highlight the y's, comma, and then you highlight, or you do control and then use mouse. Or you can just type up uh, E4 colon E9 comma D4 colon D9 uh, you will get the slope and then you get the enthalpy of vaporization uh, this time I'm gonna just do this guy times 0 0.008 uh, why because this number is in kilojoule per mole per Kelvin the slope actually has a unit the unit of the slope is Kelvin so I'm gonna just put all the units here, all the proper units here. Oh wait. Okay, so everything's good. Uh, we got this number from the graph. We got this number from uh, this Excel equation. Negative slope is equal to. Uh, they differ just by a little bit. So which number is actually uh, more exact? Actually, this number is more exact. This number. But anyway, they're both good. You can just enter negative uh, 30 kilojoule per mole uh, for this question if you have the same data. But I randomized uh, all the values, so uh, you probably will have different numbers uh, than mine. All right. Now I'm going to show you a third way of doing the calculation. Uh, the third way is to use Wolfram Alpha, and I will just. Uh, uh, Type Wolfram Alpha dot com. It's the web version. It's free. All right, it's free. Uh, this time, what I will do is I will actually just use two data points to determine the enthalpy of vaporization. We have seven data points, but if you don't have Excel, you don't have an Express sheet, I will just use the lowest pressure versus the highest pressure uh, and then I just use X for the enthalpy of vaporization alright and then this is R and then multiply by 1 over uh, the temperature over here is 338 minus 1 over 229 you hit enter you get X as the enthalpy of vaporization in joule a mole. Let's do this. Um, we got 29.7 kilojoule per mole, or 29.66. So I will record this number over here. Uh, I made a mistake uh, somewhere here. I forgot to multiply this by negative r. You should multiply this by negative r. So we got uh, three numbers. So this one is from graphing. I just uh, I remind you from this graph. Uh, this one is to use the slope function. Uh, this one is work from alpha. Right, you can see these two numbers uh, match almost exactly, only because uh, to get these two numbers, I used all seven data points. Uh, this number uh, is a bit uh, off; it's about one percent less than these two numbers, only because 
I only used the first data and the last data to compute this value.